let me explain. How are you? My name is Chris, and I am here today to share some of the things that I've learned throughout life and its journey with you in hopes that it'll help your life become a little bit more easier. So if you're interested in what we're discussing today, please stay locked into this video and we'll see you. Stay tuned. By the end of this video, you should know where you're moving to, you should know where you're working, and you should know when you need to tell the people in your life that you're moving. Okay? So the first thing that you need to consider is the city and the state that you're moving to. This sounds really obvious, but again, a lot of times people will choose a, a city and they'll choose a state to work in. I'm excuse me, work in. Yeah, you're working there, but they'll choose some place to live and haven't even considered the fact that this place is not conducive to all of the things that they need in life. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're the type of person that doesn't have, pub, uh, you don't have your own form of transportation, you might want to think, am I moving to a place that has actual good transportation system? Like, am I moving to a rural area or am I moving to a city? If you're moving to a rural area and you don't have a car, I'm sorry to tell you, but Uber is not everywhere. And it might cost you $40 to drive five minutes up the street if you're living in a rural area. So really think about, is the place that I'm moving to actually going to fit not just my wants, but also my needs. If I'm moving to a rural area or I'm just hell bent on moving to a rural area and I don't have a car, I might want to wait a little while. You may want to wait another year before you move so you can have time to save up for a car. So then once you get to that place, then you'll actually have the resources that you need to not just survive, but also be happy and comfortable where you are. Number two, this sounds obvious, but people do it all the time. And that is moving before they have any idea of how they're going to get to the bag once they get there. What do you mean by how they're going to get to the bag? Moving before you found employment. Moving before you have even applied for employment. People do it all the time. And they think, oh, okay, well, I have about six months worth of, thing, or worth of money saved up. And that's going to, you know, take me over at least to the next three or four months as far as paying rent is concerned. And you're true. That is true. It may take you, you know, three months down the line that money. But it, trust me, you're going to end up blowing through that money a lot quicker because you do more than just pay rent with your money. You do more than just pay bills with your money, especially if you're moving to a new and exciting place or somewhere where you have friends already there. You're not going to say, oh, OK, well, I just paid rent today. So I'm just going to sit in the house where I paid rent and sit under the lights where I pay the bills at. No, you're going to need something to eat. You're going to need gas money. You're going to need, you know, money just in case, you know, something happens with your car. Your friends, if you have friends, they're going to invite you out to lunch. Even if you don't have friends there, what are you going to eat? You're going to need groceries. You're going to want to go leisurely shopping. And all of that requires money. So the thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have employment set up before you get to the place where you're moving to. And uh, when I say employment, I mean, make sure that you have, don't just say, oh, you know, my friend told me she got a job set up for me. Uh, -uh. Make sure you've already applied and actually got hired, signed the documentation that states that your starting date is XYZ date before you pick up and you move across country. That is very important. The thing that a lot of people don't consider is that when you move somewhere and you don't have any idea about how you're going to make money, it is very likely that you're going to end up back in your hometown or back where you moved from originally. And we don't want that. You're moving because you want a new life and you want to start over a fresh start. Make sure that that fresh start is actually something that you can hold on to and stick with. All right. All right. The last part when it comes to thinking about where you want to move is making sure that you do not prematurely tell people that you have plans to move. And when I say don't prematurely tell people, I mean that because, you know, sometimes when you're trying to elevate yourself, people will sometimes come behind you, try to sabotage your plans. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they do it on purpose because some people don't, but some people do. And you don't want to have your plans spoiled because you prematurely let people know 
or you prematurely let people in on what your plans are. And when I say people, I do mean your friends, your family, your boss, and or your landlord. That is not an exhaustive list, but those are the main people that I can think of off the top of my head that you would naturally tell, but you might want to slow down when you think about when exactly you need to tell them that you're actually moving. Unless you have already gotten a letter of recommendation from your supervisor in order to get another job, sometimes it's best to kind of calculate when you're going to let your supervisor know when you plan on moving. <clears throat> and I say this because sometimes when you are at a job, depending on what your relationship is with your supervisor or with your coworkers, they may end up trying to sabotage you by actually terminating you before you plan to quit. But if you don't have a good relationship with your supervisor and you let them know, oh, I'm getting up out of here at the end of the year, you got a whole year for them to watch you and decide, you know what, we already know she's trying to move. We already know she's trying to leave. So let's just go ahead and put her out of misery and find somebody else to go ahead and replace her now before she can leave. And sometimes that's what ends up happening. Now, when it comes to your landlord, your landlord is not that easy because you signed a lease and they cannot prematurely put you out of your place of residence. But you do have to give your landlord a 30 day notice, at least a 30 day notice, depending on where you live at, that you do not plan on returning. The major, major key in this situation is always making sure that you have documented the fact that you have told them that you do not plan on renewing your lease and you do plan on being out of that apartment or that home at the end of those 30 days. Um, making sure that you have proof that they received that letter or document and you keeping a copy for yourself because sometimes people can be a little sneaky. When I was uh, about 19 or 20 years old, I did not make sure that my landlord at the time that she received my notice that I did not plan on renewing my lease. And she ended up going behind my back, which I'm not necessarily sure if it's legal or not. I don't think it is. But she ended up going behind my back and extending my lease without my permission for an extra three months. And then it ended up going on my credit because I had already moved by the time I found out that my name was still on a lease. And that's something you never, ever, ever want to do. Do not move. Do not make any type of move until you know for sure, for certain that your landlord has gotten a copy of your documentation proving that you had plans to move and that you had let them, that you had already let them know before those 30 days was up. So when it comes to family members, that is totally up to you when you feel like you're going to tell your family members and friends when you're going to move. But a lot of times when people find out that you're moving, especially family and friends, there will be those people who are going to encourage you not to move. And that might be out of fear that, you know, something may happen to you. That may be out of fear that they may never see you again. Um, or it may be out of, you know, fear that you'll fail at whatever you have going on. But do not let the fear of others stop you from moving if that is something that you really feel in your heart that you want to do. There are going to be many questions about, you know, whether you're prepared for this move or not. If you feel uh, so inclined to do so, make sure that you already, you know, kind of think about those questions in your mind so you already have, you know, answers pre-planned. I know sometimes when, you know, you come to your parents and say you want to move, they have all of these questions. Well, have you found a place, you know, to live yet? Have you found employment yet? Do you know what the crime is like in that city? And you want to already kind of have, you know, something in your head or you want to already have those answers for them to kind of ease those fears. But again, making sure, please make sure that you do not allow somebody else's fear to hold you back uh, when it comes to moving. This is something that you want to do. And so make sure that you have it in your mind that you're going to do it. What are the steps? If you want to actually get into the steps that you need to take in order to make that move uh, seamless, then check out my next video uh, soon. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you another day.